Hello YouTube and welcome back to Cover 2 Credits. Today we will be covering the quasi-MMO space flight sim Elite Dangerous. Now, this game is labeled itself as an MMO, but it really is not. It's a single player game with a sort of added multiplayer type system. Basically what happens is is everyone is in their own single player game. However, if you come within a certain range of other people who are playing on their different their own personal like single player server, then you can run into each other in the bigger game world. Um and that works up to like 20 people and then it splits off more instances. So it's sort of a multiplayer game, but it's mostly a single player game. But either way, that is basically how the thing works. So I hesitate to call it an MMO because it is not. It is, however, an excellent, excellent flight sim and an all around interesting sort of game. So we will keep this going and I will um, show you here. So this is the basic screen when you're at a dock and we will just launch off and I will give you guys some clues about how the flying works. Now, my biggest issue with this game is is there's not really anything to do. Um, yes, you can fly around. Yes, you can fight people. Um, yes, you can do some trading. But the game is extremely, extremely shallow. However, as you can see by the stream, it is... 100% beautiful, and as a pure flight sim, it is one of the best I have ever played. I think the uh, volume's a little loud here on the game sound, so we're going to turn it down for you guys. Okay, that's better. Now, the controls are extremely smooth and this game feels amazing. And as you can see, there's another player in here trying to dock. Hopefully I won't run into him. Alright. And uh, I'll give you guys a look at the station here. So like I said, this game is, if nothing else, very, very beautiful. as I slowly float backwards here. Now, uh, this game raised quite a bit of money on Kickstarter. Um, the players seem to be in love with it, and I know there are some really, really hardcore players that have made some really epic like gaming rigs to play it on, and there's, I believe there's a group of players who want to try and map every star system in the game, and they've uh, gotten, like, couple hundred people on board, but I don't think they're going to manage it since there are 8 billion star systems in Elite Dangerous. The map for the game is literally the map of the Milky Way. You can go to any star system in the Milky Way, and there are a bucket ton of them. So many that it would take human lifetimes in order to even attempt. Like, hundreds of thousands of them. However, with that said, this game is very, very pretty and very very fun sort of so there's a station now I will try to fly to the next zone so I can get some trading done actually assuming I actually bought something yep okay we got lithium we got gold we want to fly to this place and I am playing with my giant sidewinder thrustmaster joystick which makes this game pretty amazing now we have set our destination this is by far the funnest part of the game. Um, when I first did this for the first time, entering warp mode, I almost crapped myself. It was so, like, just visually and from an audio standpoint, it is so, so freaking cool. So we will we'll, we'll do it now for you guys, because it's awesome. Even in my crappy hauler ship, that's a giant slow tub.
In order to enter warp drive, first you have to unmask lock, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, that little uh, blue bar. When I get far enough away from the station, that bar will go away, and we will activate our frame shift drive. Alright, there we go. This part's cool. Frame shift drive charging. It's heating up. Things to watch out for when you frame shift, don't fly too close to the sun because you will die horribly. Now! And that in effect is the problem with this game, is that right there is the most exciting thing you will really do, aside from maybe if you get jumped by a player or NPC and have to fight to the death. The basic mechanic for this game is just flying around. Like I said, it's pretty shallow. There's not a lot to do besides fly from one star system to the other, maybe trade some goods, maybe get in a fight or two, but that's pretty much it. There's not really anything else in the game. Like I said, it is extremely beautiful. It is extremely, extremely engaging from an audiovisual standpoint, but it is very, very shallow. Which is why I am going to give the Elite Dangerous Cover 2 credits rating of a 6. This game has a lot of potential. If they get some more of those systems added, I know there's a new patch coming up where they're going to add actual grouping mechanics so you can group with your friends and do stuff together. And with that, they're going to add some more complicated sort of engagements. Um, sort of like a group encounter in a normal MMO. Uh, in order to, you know, add some challenge for people that are grouped. But even with that, like I said, they're moving in the right direction. But as the game stands right now, it is extremely, extremely broad, visually stunning, but excessively shallow. There's just not much to do. And that's going to wrap up our review of Elite Dangerous. Thank you for tuning in. Remember to like and subscribe, and thanks for staying until after the credits.